great to see everyone today. I'm glad that you came out and uh, truly a blessing for me. And, um, and I know that you're going to be blessed from this Bible study. And so uh, let's begin with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we just pray for your blessing upon our time together. Lord, I pray that you would guide our conversation. And God, that you would bless this teaching. And Lord, that you would uh, help us to see that seeing ourselves in Christ is what's most important. Realizing that we are a part of your family that we have been adopted by you, and we are loved by you. So, Lord, help us today to see ourselves as you see us. Help us to have a biblical identity. In Christ's name I pray, amen. The title of this series is Identity, and uh, the thing I want us all to understand is that how you see yourself really determines the way you live. It determines the way you think. It determines the way you uh, um, react emotionally uh, to life's unbalanced situations and circumstances. And let's face it, there's no one more influential in your life than you are. I mean, if I were to ask you the question, who is the most influential person in your life? Some of you would say, well, maybe my mom or my dad or my brother or my sister or my wife or my husband. But in reality... The most influential person in your life is you. And the reason I say that is because no one speaks to you all day long more than you. I mean, think about it. All day long, you're, say, you're speaking to yourself. All day long, you're saying something about yourself. And what you say about yourself, how you see yourself, is going to determine the way you function emotionally, spiritually, and, and even physically. What I want us to see is that, is that, that the most important thing you can do in life is to see yourself as Christ sees you. Uh, there's, there's a couple of things I want us to understand. You're either going to get your identity vertically or you're going to get your identity horizontally. And, I, and those are the sources of our identity, really just two sources, either vertical or horizontal. If, if I... If I choose to establish my identity vertically, what that means is this, is that I'm looking to Christ and I'm choosing to see myself as Christ sees me. However, if I'm determining my identity horizontally, what that means is this, is that I'm looking at life's situations. I'm looking at life's circumstances. I'm looking to other people to determine my identity. Uh, For many years, uh, my identity was established in my profession. I can remember when I first started out as a pastor, um, my identity was wrapped up in being a pastor. And some of you would say, well, what's wrong with that? Well, it's, it's unbalanced. It's unbiblical. Let me illustrate further. There were times in my, in, in my life as a pastor when things would be, would be going great at the church. Uh, things, I mean, people were responding. Uh, people were worshiping. People were serving. I felt like people loved me. And man, when things were going great, I was on an emotional high. You know what I mean? I was happy. I was pleasant to be around. I had peace. But you know what? It doesn't, it's not always that way in church, is it? Sometimes there's, people don't like you. Sometimes people are unwilling to serve. And, and, and often at times there's even disunity that can arise. And when those times would happen, I would get discouraged. I would get depressed. I'd get anxious. Now here's what that boils down to. Is that when things were going the way I wanted them to, I was on an emotional high. But as soon as things begin to go opposite of what I wanted, to, wanted to them to do, then I begin to drop into this emotional low. So I was on this emotional roller coaster. And some of you may even be there now. Um, And some of you know exactly what I'm talking about. Now, why was I on this emotional roller coaster? Because my identity was in being a good pastor. And as long as everybody loved me, things were great. But as soon as I felt like people didn't like me, man, I was in the dump. But praise be to God that through studying the Scripture, and especially the book of Ephesians, and that's where we'll be today, is God brought me to a place of spiritual maturity where He said, you know what, Blake? The reason you feel the way that you do is because your identity is all about being, about, uh, is all wrapped up in being a, a, a pastor and having everybody like you. But the fact of the matter is this 
Not everybody's going to like you. I mean, think about Jesus. <laughs> Everyone didn't even like Christ. And so this is what I felt like the Lord spoke to me. Blake, see yourself as I see you. Determine your identity in me. Not in your occupation. Not in what other people think about you or how other people see you. Because your occupation is going to change. People are going to change. Your situation in life is going to change. Circumstances are going to change. But listen, Jesus never changes. Never changes. And if you will choose to see yourself as Christ sees you, then you'll be able to go through life's uncertainties with peace, with joy, with contentment. Because your identity in Christ never changes. All right? And so I want you to think about your life right now. How do, where does your identity come from? Is it vertical? I mean, do you see yourself right now as Christ sees you? Or if you're honest, would you have to say that your identity here lately has been more horizontal? You've been looking for people, you've been looking at people or, or uh, your job or perhaps even your finances to determine the way you feel. Well, what I would like for us to do now is, uh, is to go ahead and open our Bibles to the book of Ephesians. And we're going to be in Ephesians chapter 1. And before we actually read our text today, let me, let me just say this. I've, I've actually mentioned it in passing. But what are the signs of having a proper identity? For example, if my identity is vertical and I see myself as Christ sees me, then the signs of that will be evident in my life. In other words, I'll have the fruit of the Spirit. My life will be characterized by the fruit of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, patience, goodness, kindness. You understand. But if, but if my identity is horizontal, then my life's going to be characterized not by the fruit of the Spirit, but by the fruit of the flesh. Discontentment, anger, anxiety short-temperedness, perhaps even depression. And so, uh, what's the solution? What's the solution? How can I gain a vertical identity? Well, first you need to be saved. I mean, let's just say that. I mean, that's, that's the most important thing. You, there needs to be a time in your life where you've repented of sin and you've turned your back on living life for yourself and you've turned your, your, your face to Jesus and you've surrendered to Him as your Lord and Savior. Um, and that's where it all begins, is, is making sure you're saved. But listen, even saved people struggle with a biblical identity, right? I know I have. And so what's the solution? Well, the solution is found in the Word of God. We go to the Bible, and what does the Bible say about us? What does the Bible teach us about ourselves once we're saved? So let's look here. Look at Ephesians chapter 1, verse 3. He says, Praise the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us, in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavens. For He chose us in Him before the foundation of the world to be holy and blameless in His sight. In love He predestined us and adopted us through Jesus Christ for Himself according to His favor and will. To the praise of His glory, grace that He favored upon us within the Beloved. So there's a couple of things I want to highlight. Notice what the Bible says about what it says, what the Bible says about a Christian, our, our identity in Christ. The first thing he says is this: is that Christ has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in Jesus. Do you see that in verse 3? Praise the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavens. So this is what God says about you. For those of us who are saved, God says, listen, I don't know what you say about yourself or how you see yourself, but this is how I see you. I see you as blessed. I see you, I see you as blessed. And the reason I see you as blessed is because you're in Christ. And all who are in Christ are blessed, right? So when God sees you, He sees you as a person who is blessed because you're in Christ. And now notice what he says about this blessing. He says he has blessed us in Christ. Who is the source of this blessing? Christ. 
So God's not going to see you as blessed unless you're in Christ, right? But if I'm in Christ, in other words, saved, then when God sees me, how does He see me? He sees me as blessed. Now notice what He goes on to say. He has blessed us in Christ, and I love this, with every spiritual blessing in the heavens. What that means is this, is that God has given you everything that you need. God has not saved you and left you in want. God has saved you and He's provided you with everything that you need to live an emotional, spiritual, and, and physical life of stability. There's no reason whatsoever for a Christian to be on this emotional roller coaster. There's no reason whatsoever for us to live life in, in dysfunction when we realize that in Christ we're blessed. And God has provided us with everything that we need in Christ to live a life that pleases Him. And then he goes on to say this about that blessing. He has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in what? In the heavenlies. So what that means is this. It's in the heavenlies that's signifying the permanence of this blessing. This blessing that God has given us is stable. It's eternal. It's permanent. So God is saying this. When I see you, I see you as blessed because you're in Christ. I see you as blessed with everything that you need to live a life that honors me. And that blessing that God has given you will never fail. It will never fade. And it will never forsake. The blessing that God has given us in Christ is permanent. It's in the heavens. Then he goes on to say this. He's blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavens. And now notice verse 4. He chose us in Him before the foundation of the world. So not only are we blessed, but we're chosen. A lot of people struggle with identity because they feel like they're alone or that no one cares about them or they don't have any friends. They feel unloved. But if you're saved, you know what God says about you? I chose you. I chose you. God chose you in Him before the foundation of the world. You see, I don't know what you say about yourself or what you speak to yourself or what you think about yourself. But I know what God thinks about you. And I know, what God, I know how God sees you. And God sees you as blessed and He sees you as chosen. He goes on to say this, For He chose us in Him before the foundation of the world to be holy and blameless in His sight, in love. Now notice this, in love He did what? In love He predestined us. Now, <clears throat> my intent is not to give us a theological workout. Okay? And so I want to be very simple about it when I state this fact. When the Bible says that in love He predestined this, us, what that means is this, is that from eternity past, God chose to place His special love on you. God has blessed you, God has chosen you, and God has chosen to place His special love on you. He says He predestined us to a what? Well, look at your Bibles. He predestined us to be adopted. Now, the Bible teaches us that before salvation that we are enemies of God. As a matter of fact, the Bible says that we are part of the domain of darkness, and Satan is our father because of our sin nature. But through salvation, we are adopted into the family of God and we're made a joint heir with Christ. So God has adopted you. You're a part of a family now and God is your heavenly father. And I know a lot of people have mixed ideas about, about fatherhood because perhaps they grew up in, in a home where uh, they didn't really have a father or the father they knew was an angry man. Let me just say this. You, you, you imagine the best father, the father you always wanted, and multiply that times infinity. And that is the father that God is. He is perfect. He is loving. He is forgiving. He is gracious. He is merciful. And he is our father. And he has adopted you. 
So, we talk about having a vertical identity. Choosing to see yourself as Christ sees you. Do you see how freeing this is? To realize that in Christ I'm blessed. To realize that, that in Christ I'm chosen. To realize that in Christ I'm predestined. God has placed His love on me. And to realize that in Christ I'm adopted. Now why did God do all this? Verse 6. To the praise of His glorious grace that He favored us with within the beloved. So why did God do this? For His grace. For His glory. For the praise of His name.